A star seed is somebody who has had 10 or less lives as a human, which in the scope of things is an idiot when it comes to running a human body. We have no experience at it. We suck at it big time. You put that next to somebody who's lived even 100 lives, and we, star seeds just were bad at it. I've never been here before. I suck big time. I have a really hard time walking um, because to me, I see everything vibrationally. So whereas you guys see a floor, I see layers. I see all of the layers of the vibration of all around. So I'm going, okay, where's the bottom of my foot? Where's the floor? Where do you people say it is? And so I tend to slip and fall again. I'm used to flying. I'm usually an energy being. Usually not I am. Most of the star seeds that come here, and they're always looking for wherever they came from. Where did we come from? And who, who is around me that, that is like me? Well, star seeds, number one, especially if you're over 35 years old, you aren't from the same place as any other star seed. It, where we come from, it only takes one God on a tiny little place like this to affect a certain change. All of us on the other side have our, I will call it an expertise. It is simply something that we have preferred, and we've done it over and over and over again. These are all energetic, vibrational things. So the call was made out by guy, and basically star seeds who had an expertise in a certain vibrational thing that was needed to help her get her up to 5D, one of us came from each of those expertises, right? And we came rushing to the planet. Now, there's not very many star seeds, a lot more than after about age 35. They're getting to be much more frequent until 2012, where they're all star seeds, pretty much, 98%, or will be star seeds. But up into the older generation, we were like the first call, that we did certain energetic work. And then you'll hear people talk about grids or vortexes, or they'll, you know, I've heard people talk about that their job is this or that. They're telling the truth. They're absolutely telling the truth that these energy grids have to be untangled and realigned and opened up and defractaled. So basically all of these energy lines that here's here's the here's the all that is energy. That's the that's energy all at once came down to this game and it divided into two and then it fractaled into a billion, 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 billion different different lines. So what we're doing now, all of us that come here, not the humans because they they continue to play their game over here to do their thing. And then the star seeds come over here. We take these lines and we'll take them from all over the planet. And uh, some one of us star seeds will be a expert at dealing with this range of vibration. So we'll take all the vibrations from our range all over the planet and we'll collapse them into one line. And then another one will collapse all these all these together into this line, and then another star seed will come in that'll collapse these two, and then another one, another one, another one, until we eventually get up to about here within the game, which is fifth dimension, which is still a lot of lines, but it's not nearly like 3D. 3D is crazy spider web of divided up lines. So what we're doing is we're collapsing everything back down into the one thing that started with that initial split into two, but it just kept splitting and splitting and splitting and splitting. That's what third dimension, that's why everything slows down. Slows down. And what you're doing is instead of looking at, let's say the world, you're looking at a single human's full life, moment to moment to moment. And that's what third dimension is. It's like really picking this thing apart, experiencing it from every level in the tiniest, tiniest way. And what we're doing is Gaia. Now, it's still going on in other parts of the game, and it will forever. But Gaia is done hosting this event. And she's going, okay, you guys can't play on me anymore. I'm going out. So she's moving her way back up into oneness. You had mentioned earlier the New Testament. We have a book in our library called Caesar's Messiah. It... The genesis, the gist of the book is that when Titus, who conquered Palestine, captured Josephus, he was a upscale teacher, philosopher, very well-respected Jew. They offered him his life if he would 
write the New Testament, basically, in a way that would flatter the Romans. And so that's what he did. Uh, do you have any information on that? Uh, over, over time, you know how history changes? And you think that you've got the history, but the further away from the event, the more different it becomes. You know this, you know this, you know this, I know, I've seen it. Well, that's what happened basically with the Bible. It started out with actually several events, that being one of them. And over time, these things were collected and they were added to and added to until you get the modern day New Testament. Same thing happened with the Old Testament for that matter. Uh, it goes back to the Torah actually with the Jews. And then the Torah went to the Old Testament. Then the Old Testament, they just dropped it all together. Started over with a whole string of events that became the New Testament. And then the Catholics, they like buried off over here. And then there's Mormons over yonder. And I mean, it's just the complexities of religion are endless and how they put it together. Now, if you look at it from the standpoint of coming down to 3D, what was done? When long-term humans, the entities that want to play this, they basically set to the entities on the other side because the long-term humans, they're the players in the game. And then there are the creators of the game, which is everybody from the creator and all the people that jumped in to try to build things and create systems. So there's the players of the game, like the gamer, and there, there's the creator of the game. There's the writer of the movie or the play, and then there's the actors. These are two completely different things. So the actors or the players in the game, the gamers, what they said is we want the toughest game ever made, period. Bar no rules. Make it the toughest you can make it. From a from a play or a or a movie standpoint, we want the most exciting, intense play or movie that you can make. Movie is better because there's special effects. That's what was called for from the creators by the people that were going to experience. It. Do what you have to do. Make it as tough as you can get. Now, ultimately, it is to forget that you're a god. Once that was done which was done, by the way, it was completed, that's third dimension. Then there was an next, there's always a next level, right, Steph? Creators, okay, give us a next tougher game. We want a tougher game. So the next level is, see if you can remember that you're a god in one human lifetime. That's the game now. So if I run into long-term humans now, they are almost always ones that are playing that game. They're trying to get out of a game that took more than you can imagine to get them into and get out of it to 5D, remember their gods, in one human lifetime. And that's the game now. That is the ultimate game. It has not been done yet, by the way. And I'm watching. But that is the game that's at foot. To see if there is a human, a long-term human, it will absolutely be a long, long, long-term human. Not a star seed. Star seed's going to get back much easier. But <clears throat> even though... None of the star seeds have done it in one lifetime either. But they've done it in multiple lifetimes, many lifetimes. They've gone down and then up. But nobody has remembered that they're a god fully to get vibrationally to 5D in one lifetime. But that's what's going on right now on planet Earth. Before she leaves. Yeah, that's the game. That's so the when game. you meet people, you can tell how, how long they've actually been here. Like mm -hmm. How many, many lives have been here, yeah. Which is funny because most of, almost everybody <laughs> that I meet Although, I can stick my intention because I'm a god. So, I'm pretty clear now who comes into my life. Before that, just people arbitrarily came in. But now I set a certain vibration. I say, you can't get to me. You may try, but the weather will turn. Something will change. And because I don't want lower vibrations around me anymore. So, unless you vibrate at a certain rate, then you can't get to me. You won't hear me. You won't find me on YouTube. My... Videos will go kajink, the phone call won't ring, won't matter. That's how it works. It's awesome. So, but if I want to reach out and see anybody, yeah, I can see anybody, which is the funniest thing ever because majority of people go, have I ever lived other lifetimes? And I'm just going, I just try not to say anything because the majority of them, they've lived millions of lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pick a, pick a, and the other confusing thing is that when you die, even within the game, 
you do merge back into the the consciousness that is all that is of a certain extent, unless you're doing a reincarnation gate, where you pretty much are going boop, 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 bloop, 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 which is the tunnel. The tunnel, mm -hmm. and that's what the tunnel is. That's a reincarnational loop. Mm -hmm. But that's because you don't want to even remember a little bit who you are. So mm -hmm. you go boop, boop, boop. That's how the long-term humans got to 3D, is doing that reincarnation loop to get down there. Worked beautifully, by the way. But, yeah, I wasn't in a tunnel. I had no tunnel at all, of course. I wouldn't have tunnel. <laughs> But they will loop, but in that loop, even in the reincarnational loop, there is a point where where you can remember that you're attached to everything that is. That is. So when people come back and they're like, then they do uh, hypnosis, and they'll, you'll have like, how many how many Cleopatras are there? Or how many Caesars are there? Name it. Well, the reason why is those, those big names that we know and we've fed energy to and fed energy to over the years, they're very big vibrational <coughs> beacons. So when you come back, you because we're all attached. So just like the child and you and the daughter and you, you're attached to all of it. You have access to all of it. We have all access to all of it too. But it's the one that you'll notice. You won't notice the, the the drug addict who died in the in the gully. You know, you won't remember that. But you will remember the big names. That's why people come back. I was Cleopatra. Well, yeah and no. We all were. And no. Yeah. The entity that actually played the role of it, it was separate than you, yeah. She's not here anymore. She hasn't been here for a long time. That was kind of her last hoopla. She did not come back. But people could access it all day long. So <coughs> that's cool. Yeah, anything else? <laughs> Are you worn out? Are we done? I'm reminded of a talk that was given by a man at church some years ago. Um, I'm reminded of it by what we were talking about here. Um, <clears throat> the occasion was a youth conference. Uh, I think it was in Southeastern University in Hammond. Yes, what it was. And these kids are anywhere from like 12 to 16 years old, okay? And they're being shepherded from class to class to class. You know, it's a whole day youth conference. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, one of them, one of the adults, I forget his name now, but anyway, he wanted to see if all this stuff that we're teaching these kids about love and charity and being compassionate and so forth is really doing any good. So he dresses up like a hobo, like a hippie, filthy, dirty clothes. He had dirt all over his face, tears in his pants and shirt. He hadn't shaved for a long time. And he's sitting there. Every time they leave him, go to one class or another, he's sitting right there next to the, to the walkway there. And, um, and just looking terrible, looking forlorn and lonely and hungry. And they all pass by him. Nobody stops to talk to him. He does this. This happens several times. And finally, one of the, um, the guys at the concession stand, where they can get their you know, refreshments and all, he's a hippie type. Got the earrings and the tattoos and the long hair and loose fitting clothes. My kind of person. Yeah. yeah, and he walks up to this man and says, hey, you hungry? You know? Well, he wasn't even a member of the church. And it wasn't, it wasn't involved in any of that kind of teaching. It just came to him naturally. Uh, so, yeah, I will tell you guys something, and this is, people don't like hearing this either. Because people like to think that, okay, I'm going to be the good guy. No offense. I'm going to be the good guy. And you can absolutely play out whatever role you want to be. And I'm going to be a healer. I'm going to save people. I'm going to reach out to the homeless and the sick. I'm going to go help the addicted. And they think they're being good. Well, you're a god. So the second that you say, I'm going to help sick people, and you have sent to the law of attraction that desire. You have now created sick people that you can go take care of. That's how it works. There are volunteers that are standing out there in the wings going, uh, Law of Attraction goes, I need sick people, I need sick people. This consciousness will go, okay, I'll get sick, I'll get sick, so that they can go there so you can play out what you want. If you need to take care of poor people, you have just sent to the Law of Attraction, you have created poor people. You are not making well people, you are not making poverty go away the way you make poverty 
anyway. Poor and sick people go away is by saying, I don't need to take care of poor people. These guys are creator gods. I want to be on a planet where everybody remembers that. That you can heal yourself. You don't need my help. You have everything you will ever need. You don't need my help in any way. You are powerful in and of yourself. I got my gig, and that is exactly the opposite of you've been taught. The truth is, you are supposed to be self-centered. Nobody can do you but you. It is your job to do you and only you. It's not your job to do me. Don't get in my way. I'm God. I know what I'm doing. Stay out of it. If there are people over there who are in need, at least be honest with yourself. If you go help them, it's for you, not for them. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel good to help the sick or the poor or the needy. But you've created that circumstance. That dance is done by two people. Two gods have to agree to it. You have to want to be the savior. They have to want to be the ones to be saved. If you want to be the hero, somebody has to volunteer to be the villain. The day that you stop that dance, the day that you all stand up and say, bullshit, I got me, That's and that includes kids, includes animals, includes the world. Guys is a super powerful being, way powerful than you will ever remember being. She's got her shit. She doesn't need your help. Stop acting like she's polluted. She isn't. The only reason she is is because you believe she is. The second you stop that and say, guy can clean up everything, she can wipe us all out in an instant if she wants to. She doesn't. She won't. But she could. She doesn't need it. So let it be. Let it be. It is in your trying to fix things that you're causing more trouble. Understand that we have all got this, then we will all have this. Can I get another example of what you're talking about? <laughs> Remember uh, the Exxon Valdez that ran ashore Prudhoe Bay, uh, what, 20 years ago, yep. whatever? Uh, <clears throat> it's the biggest environmental disaster in the history of mankind. That's what we were told. So, you know, they spend billions of dollars on this huge cleanup effort. You know, all these people in these. These suits, you know, and they got all the hot water in these bags, and it is a huge effort. Well, about a year later, some real honest to goodness scientists came to this same beach and and looked it over, did some testing and so forth, and took samples and everything. They said the only environmental damage we could find was by caused movie. by the cleanup. Yep, crew. exactly. If they had left it alone, It'd be fine. it would have been perfect. What it, what is it? Is it sunflower Stephanie that gets rid of yeah, radioactivity? Sunflowers. Yeah. There's a fungus. I mean, a bacteria that cleans out plastic and mushrooms eat plastic. Mushrooms eat plastic. She's got this. All of the stuff that you guys are worried about that are pollution are made from her. She can make it go back any way she wants. She's in charge. You handle you. Stop trying to boss other people around. And if that means that they're if they're sick. Maybe they want to leave. Let them. Take that from a dead person. Let them go. Don't interfere in their game. And if you do, mark my words, it is a game that you might not like playing. Don't complain about it later. Get out of it. Run your own life. It's hard enough to do yourself. You can't do anything else. What about the government? What about it? So evil. Evil people in the government. It is, it is part of the game. It was asked for. It was a part of the game. Make it as tough as you can. That is what is, we are gods. It took, it took all of that to get it done. And it finally was done, but it was done by, by totally running the government. Education, food, money. Everything had to be controlled to get us into complete amnesia. That was the game. You don't like it because you're a star seed. You're leaving anyway. What do you care? Let them play. Let them play. It has nothing to do with you. You're a god. It doesn't matter what they do. You can counter it. How do you do that on a daily basis? You say, it doesn't have anything to do with me. There are people that are serial killers. It doesn't have anything to do with you. There are people that shoot dope. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Same thing as you with the government. How effective are they? You, I already know how effective they are with you. Very little to do with you. So, leave them alone. Leave them over there. It's, humans are really bad, well, that's part of 3D, of making other people be what we are. Well, 
Um, anybody went to science class? Is there anything on this planet that is identical? Anyway, what makes you think you guys are going to be ever? You're not going to be. I don't care if you're the same race, color, class, creed, sex. You will be very different. Stop trying to make each other the same. It's an impossibility. It wreaks havoc on the planet. Of course, it did create 3D, so all, all's that. But if you want out, stop doing it. You're supposed to be enjoying the differences, not forcing each other to agree with each other. We're supposed to be coming up to each other and go, okay, what, what did you do? What did you do? Share, 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 share. This is what I do. Yeah, that's what we do in oneness. We don't say, well, you're not dressing like me. Change your clothes. You don't believe what I believe. Change your thoughts. It's not what we do in oneness. We do things very different. Then we come together and share what was very different. We're all one. Why would we repeat ourselves? That's just dumb. We don't repeat anything on this planet. We're not going to repeat each other in our lives. Having little books with one to ten of what you should do will never work. It never has. It never will. And I'm just curious. You guys are, got, you got the internet. How many times you could have tried to do this? I mean, <laughs> same wars, same fights all the time. Over and over and over. To the point of ad nauseum. Uh, you know, you want to know why the aliens don't come visit? It's because they think you're crazy. Because you keep doing the same things over and over and over, and you even said that's a sign of insanity. Well, we kill them. Yeah. yeah well, that's, well, that's repeated. Please come and visit, bang. Please come and visit, bang. Every Please come and visit, visit bang. The first time the aliens land is immediately bring out the village. They, they, they think you, this is a really crazy planet. They do come and visit. They're all over the place. But they are like, you're a zoo. They watch from afar. They've got bars between you, just like you do between you and the lions. They're not they're not stupid. There are there are big crash landings. It was accidental. <laughs> Absolutely. And they knew the second these were like they knew that they were putting themselves at risk. It's like, you know, going a small sailing boat into the Bermuda Triangle. They knew that they were risking life and limb. Some of them lost it all. And that's the truth. It is you guys kill each other. You kill anything. And you want to know why the aliens don't come visit and share things with you. Because almost always you would take it and hurt each other and eventually hurt them. They're not stupid. I mean, just, it's, it's silliness now. I hate to tell you this, but it, from an alien 4D nice guy's standpoint, you all are humans. You're all humans. You're all earthlings. <laughs> Giants from some. You all are one group. It's like us saying, well, there's dogs, but saying, okay, well, there's a there's a brown dog and a black dog, so those are completely different things. They're no longer dogs. They're all dogs. You're all one. But you tear at each other like, like your individual groups, and it's just not so. You're very much alike. Very, very much alike. Very little difference, as a matter of fact. Really very intricate, small details that are different. Very the, much alike. The movie's Men in Black. One and two. But you said that's a whole lot closer to the truth. Very. Than you think. Yeah, very, very true. As a matter of fact, more true than you would probably like to know. <laughs> so how does the world end? However you want it to. However you believe it does. So in other words, when you die, your world is ended. No, you can have, there are a lot of There are just people. a lot of end time There's scenarios. There's a lot of different timelines with different endings. <clears throat> there are massive timelines with the asteroid hitting the planet and blowing it up. And usually in those, because there's a lot of timelines with that, very powerful ones, because there's been so much data on it. So for the people who stay at that vibration, usually what they do is there's spaceships that come, and they'll say, asteroids come and come with us, and we'll save you. And then what happens is you get on the spaceship, and the spaceship drives away. You turn around, and it'll look like the asteroid hit the planet Earth, and it'll burst in and become very much look like the sun. And what it's done is it's in 5D. But to you, to those people, because it's vibrating so high, it, it will look like light. That, that you're getting lighter and getting more light the higher vibration you go. That's very true. In human vision, like if all of you all of a sudden were transported magically to 1850 and you stood in front of a human being from that time frame, you would look like an angel to them. You're already vibrating higher. You just do it so... 
you're around other people doing it, you don't even know that it's happening. You just don't know. And that's cool. Well, the planet does the same thing. There are all kinds of beings, lovely people, by the way, that live on the sun, and it looks to them, it's normal. Just like this is normal. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. I love the sun people. But the earth will eventually, because the sun is the masculine aspect of the earth, that's their her twin flame. So they split at that point. You know, her entity split into two entities, and the sun is her, the masculine. She's feminine, very feminine, which is the reason why the patriarchy had to rule. They had to damper down her feminine energies. Otherwise, we could never go to 3D. If it was an Earth, if it was a male planet, it would have been the opposite. Like Saturn, mm-hmm. Saturn, Saturn's a male planet, so it's dominated by females, and they dampen down. That's how you get lower the vibrations in this game. So the beans up there are really cool, really like it. But she will eventually raise, so she looks just like the sun, and that's what it would look like to somebody. So it's all played out from your perspective. Then there will be a lot of people that believe in rapture, and there will be what looks like Jesus come out of this clouds and people who believe in it will float up to meet him and they'll go they'll go up into 4D into pigeon land two planets that or two places that very much match their belief system that are already there and the bad guys that believe that they're bad well they'll end in what looks like fiery hell again well, a lot of them will go to the, the geckos planet, huh? a lot of them will get Caught by the geckos. Yeah, and the geckos will come and get them. And geckos are I, now I call in the in the four D realm. They're still light and dark. I call these two groups the pigeons. That's what you would call like religions, like Jehovah and all of the angels. And these are these are entities that are on more what is considered light. And what I consider light, but these are mostly entities that will try to win you over <coughs> using faith. Or something like that. And then there's geckos, and the geckos are the hard line. These are these are more into mechanical stuff, and you know these guys space travel in their mind. You've got to you've got to give your energy to both sides. You've got to give your energy. You've got to like give your all to them, and then they will provide everything you want. But you've got to, you've got to go through them, the pigeons, the geckos. You got to work for everything you've got, man. They're they're tough. I like them better. Because these guys are sneaky and these guys are up front. These are like, okay, if you can take it from me, you can take my place. That's very gecko. Very gecko. So, very, very, now they can still be sneaky down here, but, because they're the reptilians. There is, you know, it's the reptilians. And they are very much, if you can figure out the game and you can beat them at it, you can take the place. So, anybody like the draconians are over the reptilians who are like running the governments here for a long, long time. So, and the draconians are over the reptilians. Now, these two groups and that you've probably heard about, can if they throw in the internet, the draconians and the, like an angel, if either, these guys know what humans want. They can both stand in front of you looking like an angel. They will both cause you, now, the pigeon will only show up as an angel, and they will give you, they will bathe you in what you think is the best love ever. It is because of the perspective of what you're coming from, it will feel mm-hmm. like godly love. It'll feel like the best thing ever. But the way you can tell them is they want you to follow them. <coughs> they want you to use them in some way. That's a pigeon move right there. You don't need anybody or anything ever. So if you have anything come between you and who you really are, then you go, go away, go away. The geckos, will, the geckos will try to bully their way. They're the ones that are going to show up the most with spaceships and go, hey, asteroids going to come and blow up your your place. Um, you need to come and get. Now, the pigeons will go, come this way. We have a beautiful place that's full of, well, what's the movie? Give me a movie. Serenity. Serenity and Eon Flux. Aeon Flux is one, Eon yeah. Flux. Where they'll show this perfect place where everybody's Utopian dressed nice places. and everything's perfect and everybody goes marching to the same thing. Everything's wonderful. That's pigeon land. And it's beautiful. You'll have everything you need. Nothing's wrong. You'll have perfect everything as long as you follow the rules. But you must follow the rules. If you break the rules, you're in trouble. Geckos, on the other hand, no mm-hmm. rules. No rules at all. If you, whatever you take to get what you want, 
if you can bully your way to get it, you get it. Then you win. You can kick everybody off the top of the mountain and keep climbing. That's gecko land, which is a lot of this world, human world, is built on that. A little bit on pigeons, there's some, a little bit of that, but a lot of it's gecko. It's whoever has the biggest stick. That's, that's gecko. And geckos, if you get on one of their spaceships, mm -hmm. if you're that, they're going to take you straight to a slave pimp planet, and there are already many humans on them. Because humans are not considered very smart, and it's really the best thing for them. It's just tell them what to do, feed them, and shut them up, and they'll work until you're dead. Not fun places. Definitely, you're still here, and there are spaceships. Make sure you get on a pigeon flight. <laughs> Don't get on a big gecko flight, because you are going to go. You know, People think, well, they're going to get picked up by spaceships, and the next thing, they're going to go to... You're going to be Han spaceship. Solo. Yeah, they're going to be Han Solo. No way. You are so far away from Han Solo <laughs> status. You are not even third, going to be three-year-old status. you got a long ways to go. Most of the time, you're not going to live long enough to learn everything that you're going to learn to be able to fly spaceships. But the younger people could. And there are a lot of younger people that will play out those timelines. They want to be in space. They want to have that for the experience. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And those are all in physical, what we would call physical life here. And you absolutely you get on one of these slave planets, you work until you're dead, and yep. then you go into the afterlife. Then you go to the afterlife, yeah. Yep. yep. We were reading the uh, comments of an ET the other day, and he was saying that.